back to Miniature Game Montage and our third Flames of War Battle Report. I received a comment on how sad it was that the Nibelorvers missed so much in the first episode that we brought them back again today thinking we did something wrong. It's the Americans versus the Germans in a 100 point matchup of Annihilation. Thanks so much for watching and feel free to support this channel with a like or sub. I hope you enjoy. And up for the Americans, out of the D-Day source book, we're showing off our starter set. We have an M4 Sherman veteran tank company led by two veteran Sherman 75s. Also in the formation, three veteran Sherman 76s and three veteran M5 Stuart light tanks. In formation support, we have a veteran armored rifle platoon at full strength with six rifles, five bazooka teams, two LMG teams, and a mortar team. They'll be carried in the five M3 half tracks, two with 50 cals, one with 30 cals. In artillery, we have three M7 Priests. We have a platoon of four M10 tank destroyers. We have even more with four three-inch tank destroyers behind those. And then up in the sky, we're gonna have two P47 Thunderbolts and a Grasshopper Observation Post. We're rolling with a lucky card today at 99 points. And up for the Germans, we have an Armored Panzer Grenadier Company. Leading the force is an HQ SMG platoon with the SDKFC 251 half track. We have an Armored Panzer Grenadier platoon with 7MG teams and half tracks. They have Panzerfaust options, and one half track has a 3.7 centimeter gun. The Germans have another Panzer Grenadier platoon with Panzerfaust options and two 7.5 centimeter pack 40s. And formation support, four Panzer 4s. We'll have three Fossenjäger Stugs. And then two 88s. Behind those, the six Nibelwerfers are coming in along with a Panzer III observation post. These guys are also taking lucky, rounding out at 100 points. And deployment complete, the Americans have dropped the priest on the left flank, the three inch tank destroyers and the infantry kind of occupying the middle. And then over on the right flank, you're going to see the M10 tank destroyers along with the Sherman 75s and 76s. The Germans attempting to counter where they could, dropping those 7.5 centimeter pack 40s on the left flank. You've got the infantry uh, there in the middle, supported by the Fallschirmjäger Stugs. And then you're going to see the Panzer IVs, the 88s, and the Nebelwerfers with the observation post over in the other corner. At the top of one, with meeting engagement rules applied, the American 76s are going to do a dash move and they're moving up the right flank and they're going to apply some pressure here on the German forces. So next you're going to see the HQ Sherman 75s. They are also going to do a dash, staying behind the woods there to uh, avoid line of sight of those Pack 40s. And then we're going to see the American M10 tank destroyers. They are going to move up at a tactical speed to use the house as cover on one side. And they're going to prepare to lay down some fire on those pack 40s off in the distance. Next up, we're going to see the half tracks. They can pass that uh, crop field without any kind of dice roll. We'll finish up the moves there. They're going to take a cross check on the uh, walls here. We're gonna roll those out, good for one, two will fail, and then three, four, and five are going to be okay. So we'll cross the uh, walls there. Next up, the Stuart tanks are gonna move around the left-hand side with a dash move to immediately pro apply pressure to the Nebelwerfers. And then in the shooting step, we're gonna see the M10 tank destroyers open up on the pack 40s but they are going to miss. And that will essentially be the end of American turn one. So lots of aggressive moves from the Americans. We're going to flip over to the Germans now for the bottom of turn one, where meeting engagement rules will not apply. They will be able to fire as normal. Uh, artillery will be able to shoot as well. And up first for the Germans, we're going to see the Panzer IVs attempt to do a blitz move. They will pass that on a 6, and they are going to get a free 4-inch move. They are going to move up, and we are going to stagger these back a little bit so they can get line of sight to their target, which will be the Stuarts. 
Next up, we're going to see the first Panzer Grenadier Company move into this church building here. As many of those stands are going to get in as possible, and we will cover that back up. And then we're going to flip over to the other German Grenadier team. They are going to move into the bottom and into the second floor of this building with the rest of the stands heading towards the factory there just ahead. The HQ unit is going to attempt to dig in, but they are going to fail. We're then going to see the Stugs. They're going to attempt a blitz move, and they are going to pass with that four. They're going to move up the road here to draw a line of sight to those M10s, and we're going to shuffle some infantry around uh, so they can get a pure line of sight to those M10s. In the German shooting step, the Panzer III is going to spot for the Nebelwerfers targeting that 3-inch tank destroyer platoon. They are going to need threes to range in. The first range in attempt is going to miss. The second range in attempt is going to be good. So we're going to roll a die for each team under the template, which will be all four, needing fives due to ranging in on the second attempt. There will be three misses, but we're going to get to re-roll those due to the amount of guns firing. That's going to provide one additional hit after those are assigned. Four up gun saves are going to be made by the first and made by the second, so they're just going to be pinned down. Next up, we're going to see this Panzer IV unit that blitzed up. They're going to take shots at the Stuart light tanks, firing with their halted rate of fire, needing sixes due to long range and concealment. They are only going to get one hit out of that bunch, but it's going to go straight to firepower, and it's going to pass. We're going to reroll that cock die, and that is going to be a Stuart light tank that goes up in smoke. The Panzer IV is taking out one of the formation teams. Next up, the German 88s are going to fire at the 3-inch tank destroyer platoon, who is still concealed and gone to ground. They're going to need 7s, so a 6 followed by a 5. It's actually a pretty good roll. They do get a 6, but it does not convert into a 5, so nothing happening there. Then we're going to flip over. The Stugs are going to target the M10s off in the buildings there, long range and concealed, so they will need 6s. They are firing at their halted rate of fire. They will get 2 hits. We're going to roll armor saves here. We get a fail on the first, and we get a fail on the second, so we're going to go to firepower here. And uh, on a three up, that is going to be one dead tank destroyer and two, two tank destroyers go up in smoke from those uh, Stukes. Then we're going to see the pack 40s They're also going to target those M10s who are not concealed here on these shots. So with the shot at long range needing fives, um, they're going to reroll that cock die there and get one hit. And that is going to be an armor save that will be taken. It is going to be failed again, and we're going to go to firepower on a three up. That is another explosion. Three M10 tank destroyers blown up on this first German turn. And after the first turn, the Americans got really aggressive here. They lost a Stuart light tank over there on the flank to the, uh, the Panzer IVs. The uh, M10s also pushed up the board, being fairly aggressive, thinking they were out of line of sight, actually uh, take, took shots, lost three of those, the 75s and 76s moving around the other flank. So moving into turn two, the Americans sustained heavy casualties, but the formation is still intact. We're going to roll out a die for the uh, M10s. They are going to flee the battlefield, failing that, uh, that last stand test. And then this unit here, the three inch tank destroyers will unpin. So over to the Americans for the top of two. And the P-47s will make their way onto the battlefield, lining up those Nebel Warfers. The Grasshopper did not make it on. We're gonna see the 76s move at tactical speed up around the flank of those Pac-40. So they have officially made it into the German flank. And then we're going to see the 75s. The commander is actually going to fail a cross check here. So he is going to be stopped in his tracks. The 2IC is going to make it through just fine to the other edge of the woods. Then we're going to see the infantry. They're going to go ahead and disembark from those half tracks. And they are going to occupy some of these houses getting to the their front side of that factory. And some going into the house here, some in the middle that uh, could not fit. The half tracks are going to fail a cross check again here. So he's going to stay uh, stay behind. The rest are going to move up behind the wall, uh, using the house to their left for cover and waiting for a target to present itself. Then we're going to see the Stewarts. They're actually going to pass a blitz move here, so get a free four inch move around the side, bringing more guns to bear against those Nebelwerfers. And things are about to get dicey as those 88s eye up those P-47s. They're going to drop four shots, needing fives, and they're actually going to connect with three of them. 
The P47s are good stick handlers, though. They're going to roll up saves needing threes. They're all going to pass. They're then going to line up those Nebel Warfers with, their, with a bomb. They range in on the first attempt, and they're going to drop a blue die for the Panzer III, and they're going to connect with four of those. So three Nebel Warfers and the Panzer III is going to be hit by the uh, artillery blast. We're going to roll those up, and it is going to be three failed saves for the Nebel Warfers and a failed armor save for that Panzer III. We go to firepower just needing a two, and it fails, so that Panzer III will be bailed out. Then we're going to see the Priest. They're going to line up an artillery battery because they can spot that Panzer III up top. That is also going to clip some Nebel Warfers in the back. So they are going to get ranged in. Attempt one is a fail, but then they are successfully going to range in on the second attempt. So because of that, they will now need fives. And rolling those out for the Nebs as well as the Panzer III, they will connect with one of the Panzer III. The armor save is just fine against top armor, uh, needing just that. And then for the Nebel Warfer taking a save, it will fail. Another Nebel Warfer stand will go down, and we're not done yet because the Stuart tanks are then going to fire their machine guns into the remaining two stands, and it's going to be 10 shots. They're hitting on fives due to cover. Uh, but they will connect with uh, four, uh, excuse me, three of those shots. Uh, saves are going to be uh, rolled out here, and that's going to be two sixes. My son actually dropped the camera here. There is one fail, so an additional stand is removed. That Nebel Warfers, uh, five stands eliminated right there, and a bailed out Panzer III. Over on the other flank, the 76s eye up those pack 40s. They're going to roll out six dice, but need fives due to stabilizers. They are actually going to connect with uh, three of those, and uh, gun saves are going to be rolled up, needing fours due to coming in from the side. One will fail. That'll be a stand removed. The uh, two IC will take two shots, needing fives as well, and will miss. Then those three-inch tank destroyers will fire at those Panzer fours. They need sixes due to long range and cover. Eight shots, feeling like this could do some damage, but they all miss. Over in the middle of the board, we've got an infantry battle going on where some of those rifle teams have uh, made it to the windows and they're firing at those grenadiers in the streets. They need fours to hit. They connect with two of those. They, uh, the infantry will roll up uh, infantry saves on a three up. Those are good. The rest of that platoon is going to fire into the other grenadier company. They will also need fours to hit and uh, those are, are rolled out. There will be two more hits that go through. One save is actually failed on this. We're gonna go to a firepower and it's actually gonna just miss. So no stand will be eliminated. Then the machine guns are gonna ring out and uh, they are going to miss as well. And that's turn two concluded for the Americans. Some good shooting to get rid of the German artillery for the most part. We're gonna see if this Panzer III remounts and he will on a three up. And then the Nebelwerfers will pass their last stand test. The Pack 40 rolling out a last stand as well and he is good. So we're moving on to German turn two. And we're gonna see that Panzer III observation post move at tactical speed just to get off that hill and uh, move around to the other side. We're gonna see the Nebelwerfers uh, reposition as well, unable to shoot, the 88's unable to shoot as well. They're gonna stay put. Then we're gonna see these Panzer IVs. They are gonna make a move at tactical speed and they're coming around the back side to lend some support to where those 75's and 76's are coming around the corner. And then we're gonna see the Stugs move down the road they're going to target the 75 HQ, and one of them is going to uh, eye up the, uh, the infantry. They are hoping to pin so we can possibly see an assault. The Pack 40 is going to rotate to face those 76s, and then we're going to see some infantry dig in right here. The HQ digs in. And then we're probably going to see a complete implosion of the rules as the Grenadiers are going to move. The middle here is going to get to be really messy. So the Grenadiers, some of them are moving from the street into the other side of that factory. Some going on the first floor, some up to the second floor. Some are going to be um, moving from the building they were in up to the bottom level of that um, factory to, uh, to apply pressure onto the Americans. And we were really unsure of how the rules worked when it got this close. Um, we kind of get a feel for how assaults work, but we feel like we're really about to mess that up too. As it, there's just a lot that's unclear when it gets to be this intricate. The other Grenadier unit, they are going to move up as well. Uh, they're going to come out of this church and they are going to move up eight inches. Some of them crossing over the wall there, getting ready to apply fire onto the Americans. The half tracks are going to move up as well to support. 
but we did not allow them to shoot in the shooting step because there was just so much going on there. We just didn't know if they would have line of sights because there's supposed to be gaps and things like that. And just really unclear on how to, how to do all of this when it gets this messy. In the shooting step, we're going to see these Panzer IVs. They shoot at these 76s. All of them are going to miss only four shots. They needed sixes, long range and concealed. The Pac-40 will miss as well, being short range. Then we're going to see the two Stugs fire out. They get two shots, uh, also miss. The last Stug is going to fire machine guns into the infantry unit, and he is going to get two shots with those machine guns needing fours. So we're going to show those on camera rolling those out. He is going to hit with one. We are going to take an infantry save, which will fail. We did a firepower on this. Um, not sure if we should or not, but we did. That does fail, so everything is fine. And then we're going to see shots come from the infantry unit that came out of the church. They'll take six shots, the ones that have clear line of sight. They need fours. Three of those will go through. We take three infantry save, and one stand will fail going down to fire. The other infantry unit is going to fire as well, and they are going to let loose a ton of shots with their machine guns, also needing fours. They will get six hits, which is going to pin that unit. And we did take a firepower test after these infantry saves are rolled out. Not sure if we were supposed to do that or not, but we did. We roll out the infantry saves, and needing three ups, two are going to fail. Firepower's failed, so now they're going to go ahead and charge into contact. We're going to see some fire come back out from the Americans as they try to defend their position as the Germans close in. So the Americans let out fire. They need fours. We're going to see three hits go through, taking infantry saves here. Two are going to fail, so two German stands will be taken down, and then we're going to go to close combat. The Germans are going to roll out for every team they have in contact. All five hit, needing threes, so that will be five stands taken down. With no counterattack, they should have broken off, and this is where we got something wrong for sure because the other German team immediately charges into contact. They're going to take four swings for what they have into contact, and they're immediately going to take out four more stands. The Americans are going to roll up a counterattack, and coming out of that building, these bazookas are going to need a five, rolling those in blue dice. Uh, they will actually take down a few stands, and the Germans will not counterattack, so they're going to break off, and that American rifle platoon is going to stay in good spirits, as they still do have enough teams on the board to be that way. And at the end of turn two, the Americans once again have taken pretty substantial casualties. The armored rifle platoon was uh, really taken out in the middle of the board that particular turn. The Germans lost their artillery, but the American formation is still vastly intact, only losing one Stuart Light tank. There are a few infantry stands down for the Germans, so at this point, moving into turn three, I'm really not sure which way to call this game so far. And no aircraft coming in for the Americans at turn three. The only move we're going to see from the Americans is a blitz move here with these 75 HQs. They're going to move one out of the woods with a free four inch move and they're going to tighten up to stay in command, but bringing guns to bear against those Stugs. Right into shooting, these priests are going to get a spot from the armored rifle platoon uh, HQ and uh, they're going to call that in right on the infantry and those half tracks. And without rolling all the dice, this is everything that was damaged. Uh, one team even in the building was damaged, being sure to stay four inches away from their own team. The aftermath, you can see what happens. Two half tracks go down and one infantry stand goes down and one of those Stugs is actually bailed out. The other three bazooka teams in that rifle platoon are going to fire their bazookas at the Stugs. Um, they're going to get two hits on these fives. So one is going to go into side armor and one is going to go into uh, front armor. And uh, that one against the side armor is going to fail, but the firepower test is going to fail as well. So you're going to be looking at two bailed out Stukes. Then the machine guns and the half tracks are going to open up on the infantry in the building. Rolling those out, we are going to see approximately seven hits. And three up saves are going to be required by the Germans. Rolling those out, there will be four that fail. So we are going to go to firepower needing fives with the 50 cal in orange and um, sixes on the 30 cals in blue. And we are going to roll those out and one stand will be lost for the Germans. Back over to those Sherman 75s firing the Stugs needing fives due to stabilizers. They are going to get a hit against that one active Stug. It is going to take an armor save and that is a 
fail on a one, so we're going to go to a firepower test, and that is going to fail, but the American player is going to lucky reroll this and take that Stug down. So lucky coming into play, one Stug out of commission. Over to the Sherman 76s who did not move in the movement step. They are going to target the Pack 40 with all of their machine guns. And without rolling them out, it was uh, an absolute slaughter. They are going to attempt to shoot and scoot. They're going to pass that and actually back out of line of sight. Then we're going to see these three inch tank destroyers eye down those panzers. They can get shots in the side here at distance. Long range concealed needing sixes. They miss everything. And that is going to bring the American turn to a close. So uh, certainly threw a haymaker on that one, bailed out two Stugs, uh, destroyed another one, had an opportunity to take down some Panzer IVs. Uh, some of the infantry stands for the Germans were also removed, which is part of the formation, as well as that Pac-40. So uh, lots of good damage from the Americans. We're going to see if the Germans can counter in their turn three. And in the starting step, the infantry will stay pinned. One of those uh, Stugs is going to remount. The other one will stay bailed out. But they're going to see these Panzer IVs move up at tactical speed using this building and staying staggered. So they do not give those um, three-inch tank destroyers any line of sight down the road or uh, in that crop field. Here we're going to see the Panzer III observation post. He is going to make a dash, uh, staying in those crop rows. And then in the shooting step, the artillery is going to draw a line of sight to those tank destroyers. They're going to get two hits, having to re-roll the hits uh, due to only one gun firing. And it's actually going to take out a team because the, uh, the save has failed. Then we're going to see the 88s. They're going to line up some shots at those M3 tank destroyers. And they need sixes due to long range and cover. They will get two hits. And then we're going to roll out a gun save. And we're going to see a fail here. Firepower passed. Another weapon goes down. We're going to see one Panzer IV draw a line of sight to a Sherman 76, and he is going to miss. And then the Stug here is going to take a shot at the 75. He's going to take two shots with his halted rate of fire, needing fours, and he is going to get one hit. We're going to take an armor save here. That is going to be one short, so it's going to fail the anti-tank. The firepower has failed, so he's going to be bailed out. Then moving over to the infantry, they are going to open up from all sides onto this armored rifle platoon. Nothing is going to result in any stands removed, but that unit will go down pinned. And at the end of the German turn and turn three, it feels like they're getting a little bit on their heels. Um, the war of attrition certainly seems to be favoring the Americans. Uh, the Americans still have their 75s and 76s uh, on the board along with the Stuarts and the infantry formations for the Germans are being whittled down slowly, especially with the artillery fire that continues to come in. We're about to see repeat bombardments. In the American starting step, the armored rifle platoon will unpin and the Sherman 75 HQ unit will remain bailed out. There will be no air support coming in for this turn. Over to the Americans for turn four. In the movement step, we are going to see the Sherman 76s move at tactical speed back around the wooded terrain here to bring more guns to bear against the Stugs. They are using that terrain on, on one side to be line of sight blocking. Then we're going to see the armored rifle platoon. These guys are going to retreat back uh, to those half tracks, just trying to stay alive at this point. And then we're going to see in the shooting step, the priests are going to do a repeat bombardment, and they're only going to hit two stands in the process of doing this. They have to re-roll saves due to it being a repeat bombardment. Everybody turns out to be just fine. The Sherman 75s are then going to lay down some shots at the Stugs. Uh, only one can shoot, and it's going to miss, needing fives due to stabilizers. The 76 are then going to key in on him next. Two are drawing line of sight to the Stugs, also needing fives, and they're going to get three hits. Uh, rolling out armor saves, needing sixes on those Stugs, and they are going to roll out two. So one will fail. The firepower does fail as well, so that Stug is just going to be bailed out. The American half tracks are going to fire their machine guns at the infantry with the 50 cals in orange and the 30 cals in blue. Rolling these out, needing fives due to cover, they are going to get seven hits in total. So we're going to see some three up infantry saves taken by the Germans here. And uh, this is going to be a pretty good roll as only one of them is going to fail. And that fail is with a 30 cal, so it will need a six up firepower from the American player, and it does miss. 
Then we're going to see the three inch tank destroyers. They're going to uh, line up shots at those 88s. They need sixes due to long range and cover, and they are going to miss with their halted rate of fire. And that's going to bring a pretty uneventful turn for the Americans to a close. Um, and I say uneventful until it flips over to the German side because one, these two Stugs do not remount and then they actually fail their last stand and they're just out of range of the HQ unit. So those Stugs are going to flee the board. Um, so despite being a poor shooting turn for the Americans, it actually turns out it's going to be a pretty uh, decent turn after all. Both infantry units did unpin, so they will be operating as normal and we're going to the Germans for the bottom of four. In the movement step, we're going to see these German Panzer IVs move at tactical speed, moving around the backside of the church here and bringing arms to bear against that 2IC Sherman 75. Three are going to draw a line of sight to him. We're then going to see the 88s make a dash move. They are going to, maybe not this turn, but next turn, apply pressure on those Stuart light tanks that have just been hanging over in the corner. Then we're going to see the infantry move out of their foxholes and into the building here, which is also providing bulletproof cover. And then we're going to see this half-track make an interesting move. He is going to stay close to the infantry, but he is going to turn in such a way that it is going to block line of sight from those 3-inch tank destroyers on those panzers. Then we're going to see the Nebel Warpers in the shooting step. They are going to do a repeat bombardment onto the 3-inch uh, tank destroyers. They are going to remove another stand. And then three shots coming from these Panzer IVs onto the Sherman 75s, needing fours against this 2IC. One will get a hit. We're going straight to firepower in the side armor, and it fails, but the lucky reroll by the German turns into a four. That is going to be the 2IC up in smoke. Then we're going to see the infantry lay down fire in the buildings at the American infantry. The uh, machine guns, they're firing at their halted rate of fire. They are going to get six hits against that platoon, needing fives because they're in cover. We're going to roll up three plus infantry saves, and uh, they're very resilient as only one is going to fail. We're going to go to a firepower test on that one that failed, and it is going to be unsuccessful. They will be pinned. The other group that had some of the uh, platoon that moved, they're also going to fire their machine guns as well. The ones that moved are in blue. They also need fives. We're going to see again six hits go against that platoon. We are again going to roll up three up infantry saves, and this time there's going to be two failures, and uh, we're going to roll firepower on those. One is going to be successful, one stand removed, but they are still in good spirits. And at the end of the turn, while I thought the Americans were kind of gaining the momentum, it's easy to say that the Germans have countered that and they have moved in such a way and gotten fire laid down in such a way. The 2IC went up in smoke. They're going to start applying pressure to the Stewarts. Uh, this game is very much up in the air as we move into turn five. The American HQ unit does stay bailed out. The three inch tank destroyer does pass morale and they will pass a last stand. The P-47s also make their way back onto the battlefield. Next, we're gonna see the armored rifle platoon. They're gonna make a tactical move just behind this uh, farmhouse here to stay out of line of sight. They lose one more stand and they will be testing. Then we're gonna see the 76s. They failed a blitz move, but they're just moving at tactical speed now to be sure they can bring all guns to bear. And then we are going to see the Stuart light tanks pop on top of the hill. They've got to give these 88 something to think about. Now that the aircraft's on the board, they have to fire anti-aircraft or fire at the Stuarts. We're then going to see the priests make a move as well. They're moving around the corner to hopefully line up shots uh, on those 88s. The 88s target the P-47s with anti-aircraft and end up missing. This is going to allow the P-47s to line up their bombs. Ranging in on the third attempt, though, they're going to miss everything due to that. The Stewarts are then going to fire their machine guns at the 88s with 10 shots. Rolling those out, they're only going to get 4 hits, but since the 88s moved at dash speed, they don't get the uh, bulletproof cover. So they fail 2 saves, and those two 88s are dropped by the Stewart light tanks. Then we're going to see the three inch tank destroyer. It is gonna line up two shots with this halted rate of fire at that lone Panzer III observation post. It is gonna connect and obliterate that Panzer III. Then the infantry squad, the armored rifle platoon, they are gonna dump a ton of shots into the infantry as they have been doing in that building. They are gonna miss everything but one. So all the 50 cals and 30 cals coming up short 
Uh, nothing happens there after the infantry save is passed. Last, the Sherman 76s are going to fire at the factory. They need 7s, however, and miss, so we're going to flip over to the Germans now to see if they can counterpunch. Germans now getting aggressive. Passing a blitz move, these Panzer IVs are then going to move at tactical speed, so it's going to be a total of a 14-inch move for them, bringing them just into line of sight of those Sherman tanks. We are then going to see the infantry try to split up a little bit to limit the amount of damage that any kind of artillery can do to them. Some moving to the smaller building here from the factory. And then we're going to see the HQ unit pick up and move into the church um, in order to continue getting uh, that bulletproof covered. Next up, the Panzer IVs are going to fire one shot each and they are going to miss, bringing the turn to an uneventful end. So we are getting ready to flip back over to the Americans for turn six. The Sherman 75 will remount and the P-47s will make their way back onto the battlefield. With the 75s and 76s operational, it's really gonna come down to this showdown between these four Sherman tanks and the four Panzer IVs. So the 75s and the 76s are gonna move at tactical speed and bring their guns to bear. We're going to see the uh, priests move around uh, to attempt to uh, get shots here in future turns. And then we're going to see the Stuarts move down. They're going to engage these Nebelwerfers and easily going to take them out in the shooting step. Next up, the P-47s are going to fire their machine guns, trying something different this time. They will get 10 shots, hitting on fives due to cover. They are going to get several hits that go through. We're going to roll out of infantry saves. There will be one that fails. We go to firepower and nothing. The Nebel Warpers again easily taken out by those Stuart light tanks. The three inch tank destroyer will take a shot at that half track and miss. And then we're going to see the half tracks shoot into the building at the infantry still not getting any hits or getting any successful firepowers there. Next up, these Sherman tanks will fire at the Panzer IVs, needing fives due to stabilizers. The Sherman 75 and the Blue Dice both miss. Uh, two hits coming through on those Sherman 76s. Those are going to be uh, rolled out for their armor saves, and they're both going to fail. So we're going to firepower here, and it looks like one will be destroyed. And another Panzer IV will be bailed out. As the American turn comes to a close, the battle really hinges on what's happening right here. That German tank will remount, and uh, they're going to return fire pretty much immediately, going straight to the shooting step. They are going to get four hits against the Sherman 76s, rolling out armor saves, needing fives to equal, and that is going to be one equal and three fails. So firepower on the three fails, that is going to be two destroyed Sherman 76s, and one will be bailed out. Back in the American turn, while the Sherman 76 does remount, they are in bad spirits, and they fail. They get a reroll being next to the HQ, and they fail again. So that last 76 leaves the battlefield. The Sherman 75 then uh, takes a tactical move, trying to get side shots onto the Panzer IVs, needing fives with stabilizers. He ends up missing both. And in the German turn, the Panzer IVs return fire on that Sherman 75 HQ and end up easily destroying it, putting the formation in bad spirits. Coming back around to the American turn, the, uh, the game ends. So the Germans are going to come away with a hard-fought victory here. Uh, really, this was a game that came down to the very end and uh, came down to the Shermans versus the uh, Panzer IVs really could have went just about either way up until that point. The Americans had a really tough time getting rid of the German infantry being in those buildings. Um, could get hits, but having a difficult time. The infantry saves were just incredible. And then getting the firepowers, they just they didn't have enough to get that done. So very hard fought game by the Germans. Um, they're going to come away with a victory today. Hope you enjoyed this battle report. It is much longer than I would typically like to go, but we got a little caught up in the game and it just took a while to play out. So um, hope you enjoyed. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.